I'd like to call this meeting to order. Rebecca, please call the roll. Lardoy? Here. Hallie? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Gandy? Here. Rasmussen? Yes. Pam? Yes. Tuhill? Yes. Council, are there any changes to the agenda? If not, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Approval of the minutes of the August 23rd, 2021 council meeting. Approval of September 3rd, 2021 payroll in the amount of $126,949.41. Resolution authorizing funds transfers. Approval of the USDA Step 1 debt in the amount of $12,975. Approval of USDA wastewater treatment debt in the amount of $77,295. Acceptance of the Beautification Commission minutes. Acceptance of the Ways and Means Committee minutes. Consent. I don't think they're on there, are they? No. I, I, it was to my understanding we were going to get no. those, and we didn't get them today. I'm okay. sorry. So those aren't on there? No. Okay. Consent of a park use permit for Tiffany Eckland. That's a noise exemption. Resolution approving employment of telecommunications specialists, approval of liquor license for Shokai and Pepstop, approval of total claims in the amount of, sorry, uh, $1,130, 30, excuse me, $1,130,053.58. And we had four claims. Um, over 75,000 Alliant Energy for 77,413.12, Jones Contracting for 179,929.63, Maxwell Construction 170,609.79, Norris Asphalt 268,763.36. So I'll t entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve consent agenda with the understanding the Ways and Means Committee minutes have not yet been uh, submitted. Second. Okay, moved and seconded uh, to approve the consent agenda. Any discussion or questions? Not, please call the roll. Gandhi? Yes. Ham? Yes. Tuhill? Yes. Rasmussen? As of last time. So. Oh, yes. Hallie? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Pup forum appearances. We have a street closure, noise exemption from Tom Tuhill, Lone Oak Circle. Uh, this is our annual block party we do every year. I think this is the fifth or sixth year, and we're just asking to close off three driveways. Um, it would be from the corner of Dogwood down to 1505, which is two houses on that side. And of those three, two will be at the block party and one will be out of town. There will be live music for a couple hours. Um, one of the gentlemen on the street just moved here, has a, an older gentleman, has a small band, and they're going to play a little bit. And that's it. No big rowdy party, huh? Well, it depends how we do it. <laughs> second. Uh, moved by Hallie, second by Flournoy. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Thank you. That was approved. Um, uh, under next, we're going to hear from Greg Hanshaw uh, on the fire station task force report. Thanks, Greg. Thank Thanks you. for um, participating in this and leading this group. Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate that. Um, I'll introduce myself a little bit. I know many of the council members, but don't know everyone well, certainly, by any means. Uh, my name is Greg Hanshaw. I'm a lifelong resident of Fairfield. Um, actually, I'll admit I went off to college just a few years ago and vowed I would never return. And uh, a job opened up here in Jefferson County when I was uh, just starting grad school back in the early 80s. And I, my heart wasn't in grad school, so I thought I'm going, I will apply. And I got that job working for the county park system. And my wife and I agreed at that time we'd stay two years and then hit the road and go see the world. So we've been here ever since. We raised our family here, and I'll, I'm not one bit ashamed to say I'm a small town Iowa sap. I love Iowa. I especially love southeastern Iowa. I think, anyway, I probably talk it's preaching to the choir. I love being here and love being part of this community. Um, so over the years, I did a number of things. This being here brings back a lot of memories because I spent a lot of evenings here at city council meetings when I worked for the city 
for a number of years and then went on to work for the Dexter Company. And then 10 years ago, I, I went to work for Community First Credit Union, where I've been uh, ever since. And today I serve as their, as their president and CEO. But I live in Fairfield, and Fairfield's my home. Um, I go to work in a tumway every day. And it's things like that that make you appreciate. I mean, spending the daytime outside of the town you live in makes you appreciate coming back home every evening. So I love the fact that I'm in Fairfield, and I really appreciate and love the fact that I was asked to participate with the fire station task force with the task that the council presented them um, some time ago. I will say I spent 13 years on Fairfield's fire department a number of years ago and rose through the ranks and, and served as a captain for a few years before leaving the fire department. So I came to this uh, position with the task force with a little bit of knowledge of what the fire department does and what their needs are and what their history has been certainly and uh, what the expectations are of a fire department like ours in a town like ours. So first of all, thank you to the council. I appreciate you inviting the task force to take on this job and, and serve in this capacity. Um, you had the foresight to call together literally a group of citizens with a tremendous cross-section of our community included in that group. So the task force is comprised of 15 uh, citizens of, of our town. And again, like I said, they make, they make up a great cross-section of our community. And for that reason, I think the council was very wise in putting the task force together. And then I'd like to thank the task force themselves, a couple of which I think are here this evening as well, um, for the work that they put in as this task stood before them. Um, the task force of 15 citizens met multiple times, spent a lot of hours together, um, seeing, hearing, and talking about a tremendous amount of information regarding the potential for this project. So thank you to the task force for their time spent and for the perspective that each member of, uh, of that committee brought to the table. What the council did, my understanding, and I'm sure you all know better than I, but the council literally tasked the task force with thoroughly looking into the potential site possibilities for um, the potential of a new fire station. And those site possibilities included, included the existing fire station location, uh, along with the DOT site a half a block away from the existing fire station. Um, and the task force went to work looking into both of those sites, what the pros and cons were, and which one would make the most sense, and which one would the task force then recommend to the council that you consider um, as a potential building site. The task force throughout that process looked at a lot of information and heard a tremendous amount of information. Those things included reports like asbestos reports, um, what were the downfalls of each site with things like asbestos and many other items as well, structural engineer reports, what were the pros and cons and the downfalls associated with each site and the buildings on each site from a structural standpoint. Um, drive time analysis, not that there would be a tremendous difference if you can picture where the current station is and where the DOT buildings are. It's not like they're blocks apart, but there is a little bit of difference depending on what part of town uh, the fire department would be traveling to. And then the potential for different uh, design layouts for each of those sites. And I can tell you, um, standing before you tonight, the, the final site design, um, well, actually, I shouldn't say that, the site design that the task force is recommending to the council tonight is based on a number of different things, all of which I've already mentioned, but other items as well. Um, it's, I think it's critically important, and the task force does as well, to keep in mind that the existing building that our fire station is in today was fantastic and served our community well when it was designed and built back in 1970. 
Um, frankly, I was a little amazed that it, that it went back that far, but it was built in 1970. So 50 years ago, um, it met all the needs of our community, and it even was designed for future growth. Well, 50 years have passed, and frankly, today, that's just no longer the case. It doesn't meet, certainly doesn't meet the design needs of a modern 20th century fire department. It certainly um, doesn't have room for growth into the future, which is uh, one of the biggest things the task force thought was necessary as we look at possibilities for this project. So the site that we're recommending tonight, um, we believe and feel very strongly, certainly has the most potential for future growth, the most potential for uh, providing the room necessary for the department and the building itself to grow if and when needed in the next 50 years. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, we are recommending uh, unanimously, by the way, the task force voted unanimously to recommend to the council the DOT site as the location for uh, building a new fire station. Um, due to the size of the lots at the DOT building location and also prefer preparing, like I said, for the future, um, it was very clear to the task force that the current site um, and all of the um, all of the things that would stand in the way to be able to build a station for the next 50 years, quite frankly, we didn't feel was even possible on the current site because of uh, space limitations. <coughs> Um, that's a very quick, very brief nutshell of what the task force was asked to do, and uh, certainly a down and dirty quick report on what our recommendation is to the council this evening. So the final site um, that we would like to recommend to the council is the DOT site for the future of Fairfield's Fire Department. Are there any questions or anything I can or others in the room can go into more detail for the council on? Did the engineers say whether either of the buildings at the DOT could be repurposed or are they going to be demoed? That's a great question. Um, they did. There was, there was actually a considerable amount of discussion on what the possibilities would be there. So currently what the task force talked about at its latest conversation was a likelihood, a likelihood depending on the final design layouts, that both buildings would be demoed. But there is a definite possibility that the east building, um, from a structural standpoint, would be the only one worth salvaging if there was a way... I'm sorry, the west building, not the east building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I drive west every day when I go to the <laughs> right. The west building is certainly more structurally sound than the east buildings, which are really built almost like a residential property. Um, frankly, I believe that the result of that conversation in the end will be 100% due to what the engineers come up with as a site design layout and the very preliminary designs that the task force has seen to date, it really looked like the possibility of utilizing the entire site would make the most sense. And also given the fact that they did a tremendous amount of studies on what it would take um, to repurpose any of the three existing buildings and those numbers, quite frankly, in their opinion, would be staggering because of the age and the condition of, of any of the existing buildings. Thank you. Any other questions, Council? Okay. Thank you very much. Greg. So the next, real quickly, Mayor, if I may, the next stage uh, for the task force is narrowing, narrowing down, and this I think will be probably one of the most exciting parts of the process, narrowing down possible site plans and design layouts for uh, for the future facility for the city of Fairfield. So that information will then certainly be given 
to the council for your budgeting and planning and um, preparation needs for any kind of a plan for the future and how this project would be funded. So thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. And Greg, as you may know, Washington is a brand new fire station, so I hope you guys make a little tour over there and I, if there's any others, just to get ideas. And That's a great thought. Great thought, Mayor. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we will move on to resolutions, action items, and ordinances. Uh, so the first action item is the consideration of the fire station site selection. I'd make a motion that the council approve the committee's recommendation for the DOT site. I second. second it. Okay, moved by Anderson, second by Rasmussen. Any discussion? Not, please call the roll. Anderson? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Ham? Yes. Tuhill? Yes. Gandy? Yes. Halley? Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Thank you. Approved unanimously. Next action item is consideration to set a public hearing for rezoning 202 South 2nd Street uh, for Monday, September 27th, uh, 2021 at 7 p.m. Motion to approve. Moved by Anderson. Second. Second by Gandy. Any discussion? We know what it's rezoned from and to. I believe business to Tell residential. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? No, please call the roll. Anderson? Yes. Gandy? Yes. Halley? Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Ham? Yes. Tuhill? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Okay, thank you. Approved unanimously. Uh, next action item, consideration, again, to set a public hearing for the sanitary sewer aerobic digester replacement project. This will be Monday, October 11th, uh, 2021 at 7 p.m. Motion to approve. Moved by Anderson. Second. Second by Tuhill. Any other discussion? Not please call the roll. Anderson? Yes. Tuhill? Yes. Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Hallie? Yes. Andy? Yes. Ham? Yes. Thank you. Approved unanimously. Uh, next action item, consideration except quote and the award and award sludge removal project. All right. So um, one of the annual maintenance items for the wastewater treatment plant is to remove um, the leftover solids from the wastewater treatment plant. The last couple years, this has been done through the treatment plant project which is why you haven't seen it for a while. Um, <clears throat> so this last couple weeks, the sewer department sent out a request for quotes or a request for bids to three different companies. We also had it put on the city's website. One company responded, um, what does that say? J JDL Ag from Sockport, Iowa, um, came in with a bid of 70000 Dollars, which is right in line what we were expecting um, as far as unit prices. So staff would recommend awarding to JDL Ag uh, a two-year contract. I noticed they didn't put any dollar amount for the mobilization and reporting. Are they still are they responsible for doing that, or are they just opting out of that part of it, or what? They wrote down zero for it. So they, but they're so, still okay. Yep, yep. They just. Um, some contractors have it as separate items, others wrap it into their per gallon price. Move to approve. Moved by Hallie. Second. Second by Tuhill. Any other discussion? Not, please call the roll. Hallie? Yes. Tuhill? Yes. Gandy? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Pam? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Thank you. Um, next is a resolution, consideration of tax abatement application for 804 North 12th Street. That's the new Habitat House. Correct. Right. Move to approve. Second. Moved by Hallie, second by Flournoy. Any other discussion? Not, please call the roll. Hallie? Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Gandy? Yes. Tuhill? Yes. Ham? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Great, thank you. Uh, next resolution, consideration of termination of lease agreement with Fairfield Community School District, and Melanie will 
Okay. Give us up a prize on this one and the next one, I guess. Yeah, this is um, what's going on. this was a rabbit hole. Um, so in the discussions with the school district regarding the new <coughs> placement of the tennis courts, um, we found in city files that in 1977, the city got a grant um, for construction of the tennis courts. And part of that grant requirement was for the city to maintain tennis courts in perpetuity. And um, I have spoken with the grant um, program director through the Iowa DNR, and she said one way to get out of that clause is for both parties to agree that the city doesn't own anything. And we never did own, it, own anything with the courts. We simply had a lease agreement with the school that expired in 2002. So the first um, item is just authorizing Aaron to sign the letter that requests we get out of the in perpetuity clause. And then the second item um, is a memorandum of understanding with the school district that yes, in fact, the 1977 lease has expired. Uh, maybe it's the other way around, I don't remember which one, but um, so the school district will have to act on that one as well, but we thought we'd have the council go ahead. So also in there, the fact that the, the ones that were built in the 70s are gone. Yes. Demoed and yes. replaced by something since then. So I think perpet in perpetual, whatever. It's, it's per perpetuity. perpetuity has ended because they don't exist anymore. Right, right. <laughs> but whoever yeah. signs a contract that says you have to take care of something forever. <laughs> Did weird things in the 70s. That's right. Okay, so the first uh, resolution we have is the termination of the lease agreement within Fairfield Community School Districts. Motion to approve. Moved by Anderson. Second. Second by Flournoy. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Anderson? Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Ham? Yes. Gandy? Yes. Halley? Yes. Tuhill? Yes. Okay, and the next action item is the author to authorize request of release from that land and water conservation fund grant requirements. So this is the perpetuity. So I move that we authorize the request to release the city from the grant requirements. Great. Thank you. Moved by Flournoy. Second. Second by Gandhi. Any other discussion? If not, please call the roll. Flournoy. Yes. Gandhi. Yes. Ham. Yes. Rasmussen. Yes. Halley. Yes. Tuhill. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Great. Thank you. Next resolution, consideration, consideration to accept agreement for the city bridge federal aid swap funding. We have a letter of award. Um, yes, this is the 100% um, funding grant through the Department of Transportation for Crow Creek Bridge. Um, the project is estimated at around 1.3 million, um, or 1.2. The agreement is for 100% of the construction costs up to $1 million. Um, we do intend to apply for some trails funding in order to cover any shortfall, um, but we would recommend entering into that agreement with the Iowa Department of Transportation. If we don't get the grant for the trails, do we have sufficient funds in the budget to cover the shortfall? Yes. The, uh, to note is that in, that in the agreement with the county, they received $150,000 for that bridge for maintenance. That was my other question. Do we still have the money from we, the uh, DOT? Yes, we still have that money. Yes. So that... That would be part of it. That would, the intent was that we would have one million for construction, and then the one fifty from council, and then we've got budgeted another one fifty. Um, so it would really just be if the construction costs go up. Great, thank you. Is this going to control the flooding underneath the bridge? Um, it will certainly be raised, and a flood study. Um, that's the next item. Is the agreement with the design engineers, and a flood study is part of that. Okay. Move approval. Moved by Flournoy. Second. Second. Second by Anderson. Any other discussion? Not, please call the roll. Flournoy? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Tuhill? Yes. Ham? Yes. Halley? Yes. Gandy? Yes. Thank you. Uh, next action on consideration of agreement with Calhoun Burns Associates. Again, this is for Crow Creek, I think. Yep. You just said what it was, so yeah. I don't know if you have any more to say. No, um, we have not. Calhoun Burns does our inspections. Otherwise, we haven't really worked with them for several years because we haven't done a major bridge or box culvert project. However, um, they do lots of work for the county. 
um, do work statewide. Uh, we look forward to working with them. This agreement is for preliminary uh, design services with a final design contract coming later. Um, if I added Article 4 up correctly, the total amount is $32,950. Is that covered by the grant that's outside of the grant? No. So the grant is only construction, okay. um, but the 1.3, 1.2, um, budget includes engineering. So, okay. That's moved to approve. Second. Moved by Hallie, second by Flournoy. Any other discussion? Not, please call the roll. Hallie? Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Gandy? Yes. Two Hill? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Ham? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Thank you. Next action item, consideration of amendment number one to right-of-way services agreement with JCG Land Services. Um, this is for the Highway 1 project. Um, land acquisition is going well with that project. We are about halfway through, but uh, the remaining landowners own several parcels. So once we start, um, once we get a few of those, that number will really jump up quickly. The amendment is because the original plan was for the city to pay for the appraisals, and um, they're just signals got crossed, and JCG paid for the appraisals. So this number was already in our budget. It's just a matter of who paid for it. So JCG is asking for an amendment of $36,106.66 um, to cover the appraisals and review appraisals for that project. Which you said was already budgeted for. Yes. Yeah, it just, it was us paying for it. Now it's JCG paying for it. What? Motion to approve. Moving it from one part to another. Yes. Motion to approve. Second. Moved by Anderson, second by Two Hill. Any other discussion? Not please call the roll. Anderson? Yes. Two Hill? Yes. Gandy? Yes. Hallie? Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Ham? Yes. Thank you. Um, last resolution here, consideration of temporary easement for the 4th Street paving. Um, we talked about this in a couple project updates where the curb ramps are meeting up with the concrete that is on private property on 4th Street. We needed to tear out some of that um, in order to make a nice transition. We were having trouble having the property owners get back to us. Once construction started, one of the property owners did get back to us and agreed to sign the easement. Um, so we are recommending approval of a temporary construction easement um, for Thomas and Molly Ridge, Ridgely for $50. Did you say $50? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I move There's approval like of the temporary work, easement. <laughs> second. Okay, moved by Flournoy, second by Two Hill. Any discussion? Okay. Uh, if not, please call the roll. Flournoy? Yes. Two Hill? Yes. Ham? Yes. Hallie? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Anderson? Abstain. Gandy? Yes. Okay. Under the mayor's report tonight, um, first off, I want to thank the Fairfield Fire Department. If you went through town on Saturday, they had the great big flag up from the end of the fire truck. It was a beautiful sight against that beautiful blue sky and was very touching. And um, also, if you had any time to listen to the radio or watch TV or anything, any, hear all the stories from 9-11 20 years ago, there were just so many very touching stories and um, all I can say, you know, mostly what I want to convey is that, you know, every day our police and fire department go out and know that they might have a tough job that day. And for some of them, they don't know if they're going to come home that day, which is what happened 20 years ago. Um, and so, and again, I want to thank our departments here, our people locally, our police department, our fire department, our sheriff's department for the hard work that they do every day. Um, they're an underappreciated group. So thanks, Chief. Thank you very much. Um, we have a proclamation. This is National Library Card Sign-Up Month. Whereas a free library card is important school supply, Whereas a free library card is a passport to adult education and entertainment, 
Whereas library programs range broadly from early childhood literacy to adult business training and research skills. Whereas librarians offer dig digital and print resources for people of all ages. Whereas libraries continue to transform and expand their services in ways that meet the needs of the communities they serve. Therefore, be it resolved that I, Mayor Connie Boyer, proclaim September to be Library Card Sign-Up Month in Fairfield, Iowa, and encourage everyone to sign up for their own library card today. And so I think um, Rebecca is putting together a program with maybe some businesses that might have <coughs> discounts and different little things. So if you haven't gotten a library card, please go get one. Um, on Friday, uh, I attended the forum, and I think some other people did too, for Fairfield's Future. It was put on by the Sierra Club. They invited four people down from various uh, locations in the state, uh, Dubuque, Ames, Des Moines, um, and we heard what some of those other communities are doing in their sustainability area, um, how they're leveraging state and federal dollars. Uh, it was an interesting morning, and uh, you will be able to see that on Fairfield Media Center, so I encourage people to, to watch it. Had some good information on it. Um, how many weeks has it been since we had our building code with the contractors and rentals? Three weeks? I think it's been three weeks. Three weeks. Um, for those of, the, the, those of you that weren't there, I would say um, it didn't go all that well <laughs> um, in the sense that there was uh, a lot of comments uh, for not moving forward with building codes. But one of the questions that came up, which I felt like I did not adequ adequately address with the people that were there, uh, that question was, where is this coming from? What's bringing forth the talk of building codes? And so um, I felt like I needed to talk to the, you know, to our community and say, you know, a few within the last few years, we put together this comprehensive plan, and that was with a committee of community members plus the council. And in the housing area, there are particularly four areas where this was kind of driving this, and I wanted to read it. Um, consider creating a home improvement and rehabilitation program to help owners update and modernize single-family homes in Fairfield. Develop a neighborhood evaluation and improvement program to target areas for cleanup and code enforcement. Improve the rental housing inspection program to ensure rental housing meets minimum standards for quality of life and property maintenance and adopt a building code for new construction that ensures safety, sustainability, and energy savings. So this is a big driver of, I think, where that building code was coming from. Um, so I wanted to also dispel one myth, if you will. Um, after that meeting, I talked to two gentlemen that told me that people are not painting their house, houses because they believe that it would increase their property taxes, so their assessed valuation. So I went over to the assessor's office and asked that question, and they told me that's maintenance. It would not increase their assess, assessment. So I think that's a myth that I want to get out to the community. What I'd like to do is have um, you know a town hall meeting with Steve where people can ask some questions, and we can kind of get some of that information correct and dispel any myths that are out there like that. Um, Veenstra and Kim uh, will not be planning on working with Fairfield if, if the council would decide to move forward. Um, so you need to know that. I think our next action item really is, again, this is my view and I want to get the council's take on it, is to do one of two things or some combination. I did think of uh, a list of names that I have put together on a piece of paper. I didn't bring them with me tonight because it's premature, but to relook at the state uh, maintenance codes, and which is what some of it, uh, our current code is fashioned after, um, and relook at that as far as rental inspections, nuisance codes, our fines, et cetera, and get their recommendations we that the committee could be contractors landlords uh, somebody in manufacturing um, you know we get a cross-section of people 
Um, so that's one idea that I had. We could work through the Economic Development Committee. We could get that these two committees together, however you want to do it. We could talk about it further on our work session. So, um, and maybe you want to let that set telework session and decide how you want to move forward. But that's kind of where we're at right now with, with the building codes. Any thoughts? Just clarification. So this group would specifically look at the state code for rental properties? Well, state, go ahead. I was just going to say, yeah, the habitability code that we modeled our uh, uh, up Inspect rental inspection code after. Yeah. Yeah, and along with adding, looking at the uh, nuisance abatement codes to where we could look at more of the hab habitability standards through the city. So with the, with the goal to be potentially to strengthen our existing zoning code, or is the goal to pave the way to continue this conversation of Well, in of my view, codes. it would be to um, update our current codes. The zoning section? That and the maintenance, the nuisance, our fines, well, all that section. So the reason I'm, mean, I'm mentioning zoning, it's the only area we can enforce private property, my understanding, is in our zoning code. So if that's the question, you know, then I think then what we would what we'd be exploring would be what power does the state grant the city to expand that portion of our code? Well, we've already got a nuisance abatement code where we talk about some things with housing, but not a lot. But we also have our rental inspections, which is talking about private property. So we're looking at <clears throat> when when we talked in the building at the meeting about improving housing stock, we had a number of people say, well, why can't we do something? So I guess it's kind of throwing out that bone to where we're all right. You wanted to be part of this process. I see. So, so you invite them to so be part yes. of the solution. Yeah. John. Is it possible for the city, without building codes, to say require all structures have siding, so that you don't have a situation where someone has, say, a tarp, in place of something more permanent? What What are our rights in terms of handling some of this through our existing zoning code rather than adopting building codes to do it? Well, you could have a homegrown building code that said all houses have to have gray vinyl siding. Uh, if you wanted to try that on, well, I just meant uh, siding of some kind. Of, yeah, I'd say it's hard. Yeah. But uh, generally, um, you don't get to be that ascetic about stuff. Instead, uh, Aaron's right. We do have a detailed, uh, enforceable nuisance code uh, that basically covers things that are run down, dilapidated. We have another part of the code that talks about how houses that can be condemned for being uh, unsafe, dilapidated, etc. So we have a couple areas there. Uh, what you're sort of talking about as far as the rental housing in this community is something that it gets overlooked a lot uh, until you hit the nerve uh, as far as rental housing. We, pro we have hundreds of families in this community that depend on us actually having an inspection system for rental housing. And that goes to the HUD rules for 202 subsidies and Section 8 subsidies, which uh, families need. Uh, and the rules at HUD uh, do get updated. We started with them in the early 90s. Uh, they have a handbook that's as big as our code that's just mm -hmm. housing rules and standards and fair housing treatment, et cetera. But a, a good part of it has to do with uh, when you use the term habitability, how do you define that as far as all the things people take for granted? And our habitability code isn't an engineer's code, but it is a safety code and it is a... a living code as far as uh, standard of living that is 
comfortable living that the federal government would say you can subsidize. So um, we could probably start with the HUD uh, handbook on their housing standards as far as what our housing standards were. I don't know. Is Scott still out there somewhere? Did he, he left? Uh, Scott knows the HUD uh, standards inside out. That's what he inspects by. Uh, and uh, we did have quite a debate for about two years back in the early 90s about comparing habitability standards with uh, engineered uniform code standards. And uh, it wasn't much different than uh, the crowd that showed up every time for standing room only meetings was very anti. Uh, and about the most effective way to tell them, look, you're shooting yourself in the feet, is if you don't have any code, you're going to cost hundreds of families the opportunity to have subsidized payments on their housing each month. There's a good reason to do this, at least to inspect for habitability, and don't be opposed to everything. And uh, that got said a number of times 30 years ago. Uh, it's still true today. And as far as uh, the engineer uniform code standards, uh, they're a better model as far as uh, if you want upgraded housing, if you want other kinds of things going into your housing market besides uh, the minimal standards for safe living. But HUD, at least, uh, we have those minimal standards for safe, li safe living. Uh, and uh, other than that, if we want to pair off on things of our own, uh, I know Myron Gukin, uh, when he was on the council, worked two or three years with the uniform codes uh, that were engineered codes, trying to cherry pick pieces of those. And I think he got kind of frustrated that um, cherry picking really doesn't work very well either because there's probably always going to be somebody who says, well, why does it have to be that one? And why is that better than just what we've got right now? Because most people are going to do it right anyway. But um, anyway. But there's also a state maintenance code, right? There, Yeah, there's some minimum standards as far as uh, what they expect as far as uh, uh, safe housing. And that's, I think, what you're talking about compared to things that go to. There is a, there's a state uh, mechanical code. There's a state electrical code. There's a state, I guess I'll call it plumbing code. Uh, and those are all things that if you want to go to something like uniform standards, you can go to the state code and they'll give you an idea. And they have a department for each of those codes. They just, they're understaffed. Uh, they come out and inspect stuff region by region uh, with a small staff. And I don't know when the last time I was aware there was somebody from uh, any of those state uh, uh, building code departments uh, that was in our community. Uh, so it's just, it's spread pretty thin. And my understanding is we are trying to get somebody from the electrical down to review a building here that is of concern. And um, just so you know, I came across a, a building owner this week who is rehabbing a building, and they said there were many uh, electrical wires that were not tied off within the wall. And um, so to say we don't have, yes, we haven't had a lot of buildings burned down, but if you plan a day with Scott, I think it would be good for anybody who wants to do that and see some of the things that he sees. And um, I think some there have been, I know of one house that I think burnt down because of an electrical issue. That's been a few years ago. So to say we don't have any, I don't think is accurate. Yes, it's not happening every week, but I think we do have some risks. And, um, you know. Every three or four years, Scott has the fire marshal down, and he will. Uh, Scott's pretty good at spotting something that he thinks is dangerous, and he'll red tag it. He won't let people stay there until it gets inspected. And every once in a while, you'll find somebody that their idea of rewiring is 
nailing extension cords to the floor to add outlets and things like that. And we've had more than one commercial building and one more than one residential fire exactly for things like that. So, and Scott knows where they were and I know where they were. So. Well, it sounds like they're both state and federal standards that we can look to to possibly update our safety and habitability code. So. Sounds like something worth doing, especially if the HUD is 30 years old. Our, our code older, reference. It's older than that. Well, if our it's reference been, to it is. Yeah, it goes back to our housing at Logan in the 70s, actually. Yeah. I'm sure they've upgraded it, so yeah. that would be a good thing to do. So we have an ordinance on that, really? It does not update automatically when HUD reviews its own set of standards? Well, HUD sends out circulars every few months with something that might have changed slightly, so it updates every year, actually. Does that update our ordinance also? No. no. Our ordinance, the words habitability and how our ordinance is enforced is Scott looking at what is there. But when, HUD, when the Scott is inspecting, he uses the HUD standards? So he uses the current standards? He, actually, I think Scott has about an eight-page checklist that's based on the HUD standards. And then every four years, we do an HVAC uh, evaluation to make sure people's heating and cooling are safe. And that rotates for a quadrant in town. Well, that could be a change that we would make, is have the ordinance reference HUD. The current standard. Yep. That instead of, instead of listing it concretely, it just references right. the HUD standard, so we can keep it updated that way. So would you like me to put together a committee? to make and then work with the economic development committee how would you or do you want to think about it and let me know like at our work session or how many move forward with that when's our work session i can't remember october we haven't october, yeah we, yeah, haven't, we haven't set, set a date day. have we <laughs> no I think that was something we were supposed to so do talk about over it three weeks we over were. how many more meetings do we have before the, we work session? the work session we might want to do some preparatory work for the work session to get yeah. some things done before we meet so we can make some decisions about okay. uh, which direction we want to go in. Yep, I agree. Okay. So should we set that work session next time then? We have to get that done. Yeah. Uh, my fault. I, I, I meant to make sure that was on the agenda. Okay. Last thing that I want to mention is um, I'm going to be tracking the, the valuations of our building permits for you on an annual basis. Um, certainly we, you know, we do that through the, through the office here, but I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, I put, um, well, I didn't write it down here. I had calculated from 2015 to partially through 2021, and it seemed to me it was between three and a half to 4,000 in valuation from our building permit, building permits. So just this year alone, uh, building permits, and these are categorized by accessory buildings, commercial, a deck, fence, single family, and solar arrays. Total, we have $747,913 in new valuation. Now, again, this is estimated that they write on their, on their um, building permit, and we've had four demolition, demolitions. So just kind of interesting. Um, what I'm, again, planning on doing is by month, and then at the end of our fiscal year, you can get a, we'll, we'll give you a report. Just kind of interesting information. So that is all I have. Um, John. Yeah. I'll get a chance to talk to you a little uh, more during closed session, but I did want you to be aware uh, we were supposed to, about a week from now, have a closing on uh, about $15 million of revenue uh, notes having to do with our sewer project in step two. Uh, and that's been moved back courtesy of USDA and rural development because uh, we're probably going to be the beneficiaries of something that will save us hundreds of thousands of dollars of interest over the next uh, 20, 30 years of that financing, but uh, interest rate is probably going to go down October 1st. 
USDA uh, Rural Development is watching that closely. Uh, they decided that our closing that was supposed to be September 22nd would be better serving us if it was on October 22nd. So uh, this affects me somewhat because since uh, beginning of August, uh, late July, I've been doing uh, something on 77 parcels that are our, our right-of-way parcels for that project. And I'm sort of a necessary evil. I have to pass title on all that stuff before USA will let us have our money. Uh, and uh, Ehlers bonding attorneys in Des Moines will sign off on anything. So uh, it set me back a little bit when uh, our USDA people said, oh, by the way, we're going to bump you a month. Uh, and I said, well, please don't bump me a month and make me have to do all of this over again because it's keeping me up at night. And uh, anyway, they said, no, we'll give you a, a, a pass so you can just do us an update on the things you've already got done and we won't, we won't be upset with you. But anyway, so we're going to go into October and have our closings the week of the 20th of October. Uh, and this, this amounts to something where we're going to tie up your city uh, administrator and your mayor and your clerk probably for a full afternoon signing uh, probably six dozen sets of uh, documents that USDA wants. The uh, city administrator actually showed me a signature stamp he has, and I'm thinking about that myself all of a sudden. It looks like a good idea. But anyway, we're in, in shape to... Uh, get the step two done with this. So we'll have the uh, uh, project almost complete. We'll have the money and the final payments, and uh, we'll move on to step three. So that's what I can tell you for now. But anyway, I think the mayor and Aaron ought to keep the 20th and the 22nd of October open. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, committee and board reports, Economic Development Committee. Uh, we met tonight, we had one agenda item. It was our final draft of a new ordinance regulating mobile food units on public property. And we just fine-tuned a few areas. Essentially, um, any food truck that wants to be in a public park gets approval from Park and Rec through a park use permit. That's separate from this, so that instead of making them get both, they would just get one or the other. And then we uh, aligned the permit fee with the peddler license fee just to make them an agreement and finally made it explicitly clear and spelled out exactly what we mean by the interior public spaces around Central Park by listing, for example, south side of Broadway Avenue between Main Street and Court Street. So we did that for all four so that somebody wouldn't park on the business side and say, well, you said around Central Park. So sometimes it's better to be explicit like a like a lawyer, you know what I mean, Paul? Just like, so we'll bring a draft of this to council at a future meeting whenever our city attorney gets around to, I mean, it's pretty much drafted, but he's got to put a couple fine fine tuning little things on there and we'll be good to go. But again, this is only for food trucks if they want to be on public property. If they're on private property, they get their peddler license, they get their state licenses and all that. They don't need this. Great, thank you. Any other committee reports? No? Okay. Administrator and department reports? We covered the building permit or building code section, so I don't have anything else. Um, okay, uh, so we need the police chief to help us set the trick or treat night. Saturday, October 30th, and Sunday, October 31st. We landed on the task force of Rebecca Loper and I landed on after several several emails on Saturday the 30th from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. 5.30 to 7.30. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Everybody's putting in their phone right now. <laughs> I like it. Give some time to figure out what they're going to dress up as. Yes. All right. Um, Melanie, Maybe. do you have anything? No? And Aaron, nothing more from you? Okay. 
If that's it. Trick or treat yeah, I think we vote. We, we vote. vote. Oh, approved trick or treat. Oh, okay. Sorry. Approved trick or treat. Oh, okay. Sorry. Trick or treat now? Yeah. Right. So I okay. move that we accept the recommendation by the chief of police to Thank make you. it Saturday. Move by Flournoy. <laughs> Second. Second by Two Hill. Any other discussion? Saturday from five thirty to seven thirty. I would have said that. Okay. <laughs> okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Okay, great. So we are going to go into closed session, so I will take a motion to uh, move to go into closed session. Motion to move to closed session. Move by Two Hill. Second. Second by Gandhi. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Okay, great. Thank you.